welcome back to a little bit of deep learning in Keras, where we learn just a little bit of deep learning and a whole lot of Keras. And today we're even learning just a little bit of scikit-learn. So, uh, so be inspired. Um, so scikit-learn is an extremely powerful API. Um, you know, in fact, I've done an entire series on it, and two of the most important things about it we'll be covering today. So there's going to be grid searching and then pipelining and feature unioning. So please go on those links below if you don't know what this is, and please just watch that entire series. It's incredibly useful. I wouldn't have done it if it weren't. Um, so scikit-learn is an incredibly powerful API, and Keras provide, uh, in fact, provides some wrapper functionality to allow you to take Keras models and pipe them right into scikit-learn. So if you're ready to get started, let's go. Okay, so wrappers for the scikit-learn API. So this is, this is pretty big. So you've got two wrappers. One is called the Keras classifier, and the other is called the Keras regressor. So the, these, these are the two big things that you can do. <clears throat> Each of these has a build function, so you need to provide it a build function as well as some uh, parameters. Um, so uh, let me let me go ahead and show you what a build function is. And the build function is pretty easy. So the build function, in this case, is just a function that will build a model and will return a model. Um, so you can it, it can only use sequential models. That that is that is one thing that's kind of important to note. Um, so you go ahead, you build a model, blah blah blah, it does some cool stuff, whatever. Uh, you need to compile the model inside and then you return it. Um, we take your classifier, you wrap the build function, and you provide it any number of parameters that you want. So in this case, I provide it two epics. So I can provide it things, um, <clears throat> excuse me, so I can provide it um, arguments for my actual build function, so an optimizer or dense stems, or I can provide it uh, arguments for the fit function. Um, so in this case, I can provide the arguments for the fit function. So. Uh, we go ahead, we run this, we run this, and uh, you can go ahead and just fit. So you take some data, you just fit on the data, blah, blah, blah. Um, and literally all the good stuff is here. So uh, Keras, oh, let me go ahead and hide this from you. Well, it's fine. Um, so Keras has uh, a predict probability as well, but remember, scikit-learn, so also all of their models have a predict probability. So you can run that, it will predict the probability. Uh, excuse me. In addition, and this I think is the coolest thing, you can use grid search with Keras. So if you ever want to do hyperparameter search with Keras, you can incredibly easily do it by using grid search. So you provide grid search, you provide your Keras classifier, and then you provide the arguments that you want to grid search over. Again, you can grid search over the number of epics or any sort of fit param, but you can also grid search over the, um, the parameters that you pass into your build model. And the parameters you can pass can do anything. They can give you like 10 layers deep. They can make the layers different. You can use like LSTM or GRU, all sorts of stuff. Uh, you, can, you can sort of specify here and you can grid search over. So we make our grid search and then we could go ahead and, and fit. This is gonna take a while. Um, because this has to train so many epics, right? It's gonna do, um, I guess we're doing uh, two, four plus six, seven. So we're doing 10 epics. Uh, sort of in total here on, on a good chunk of data. Um, <clears throat> and once we're done with this, of course, uh, just one second, uh, we we have the, oh man, even even more than one second is even more. Okay. And of course, after we do this, we have the classic grid search object that will show us what the best parameters are. So in this case, the best parameters turned out to be 16 uh, in terms of dense stems and three epics. So, so that's the scikit-learn wrapper. Um, you can do it for regressors, you can do it for classifiers, you can train over any sort of parameter that you want. It's incredibly useful. Uh, you can even put these into pipelines or feature unions or stuff like that. So, for example, um, you can have a pipeline which does some like pre-processing stuff that's really good in scikit-learn, and then you can spit it into a Keras deep learning model. Okay, I hope this has been useful. Uh, please do tune back in. We're doing our last episode uh, next week. So, as always, it's always a pleasure. And uh, I'll see you guys again.